Um, the gorilla suit was used in a photo shoot with my band Crud for our second record. And uh, uh, the, the rubber glove just got left in my bag. And I always thought it was funny when I get checked at the airport and I go through my bag and they find my rubber gorilla hands. You know, mm. once in a while I use them at the gigs, you know what I mean? It's just weird. He's the one and only Vin Dombrowski. <laughs> Fantastic to be here. Yes. I don't know how any of this happened though. Like how do how do is it that we're talking today? Is it through Dana? Is it how how did this happen? Uh, just like, how, uh, are you asking me like how we got in contact? Or are you asking me how does technology work? Absolutely. I'm not sure how this works. Yeah, how do we get in contact? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> my my husband's name is uh, also <laughs> Vincent Dombrowski. So he contacted Dana to contact you, and we just now are all together in this virtual world and making it happen. That's cool. Okay, it's come full circle then. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Vincent Dombrowski. I've never met a, another Vincent Dombrowski in my life. So we're, I think we're going to have to do one of those uh, genetic tests and see if there's any uh, connection between the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, he's not really the one and only Vincent Dombrowski. He uh, is. Could he be my son, perhaps? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's a whole nother stream. I think so. <laughs> Fair enough. But, uh, so one of the first things that we wanted to ask you was we recently uh, had Dave Ellison on our stream and he yeah. was talking about his new book, Rockstar Hitman. And he mentioned that you were the gentleman on the cover of his book. So I wanted to know how did he approach you about being on the cover and what has it also been like working with Dave in Lucid? Well, Dave uh, has a, uh, a a partner with this, this book. Uh, the partner Drew Fortier, and Drew plays guitar, and uh, they they put that book together. And uh, in the midst of all that, we were writing and recording some songs, and uh, it just started to kind of develop that they needed some kind of visual for the cover of this book. And uh, I think the visual on the book is probably me 20 years ago. It's certainly not me now, but uh, you look the same. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you fooled us. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Cause he, he was showing us the book and he's like, spoiler alert. This has been Dombrowski. And we're like, gotcha. Very cool. <laughs> You're like my husband. <laughs> Weird. Didn't know he did that. We um we did a stream a, a few days ago with some gentlemen from Blue October, which I believe you uh, have either toured with or worked with in the past. And I was like, yeah, they have the same name. It's crazy. And they're like, your husband's name is Sponge. I'm like, no, I think I think he missed the point. Of that. But um, so I, I know you've also worked with Dave in. Uh, is it a band called Lucid? Well, you know. It, uh, it it sounds like the group is going to be called Spoiler Head. Um, the word lucid could be attached to some other artist. So we thought it was like prudent maybe to switch to a different name. So I think it's going to be called Spoiler Head. Ah, well, spoiler. Cool. Spoiler <laughs> Head. I love it. <laughs> Danica? Well, then, we, so we've recently actually more recently than not recently, had a lot of guests from Detroit on our show. Uh, and we love asking about the Detroit music scene. And so uh, Alice Cooper recently put out an album called Detroit Stories based on the Detroit sound. So we were wondering, what do you consider to be the Detroit sound? Well, I've always considered the Detroit sound, well, for me, you know, like a very guitar driven sound, a la MC5, Iggy Pop. Alice Cooper, certainly back in the day, uh, with, with his his original band, uh, you know, the, the old band, I think like Glenn Buxton played guitar and Dennis Dunaway was on bass. And that to me was a very Detroity kind of thing, not to mention, um, you know, Ted Nugent. I mean, it's just anything. And Kiss certainly is not from Detroit, but Kiss was made famous, in my opinion, by Detroit with the live record made at Cobo Hall in Detroit. And uh, to me, like Kiss has always been, for some reason, part of that whole loop of the Detroit sound. But as we know, Motown, um, the um, electronic type of dance music is well known around the world from Detroit, rap music. So, I mean, we got it all for sure. 
Yeah, a little column A, a little column B, and that's what, you know, makes Detroit so special is it's kind of like the melting pot. And gosh, so many incredible artists have come out from from Detroit. We had um, Mark Farner on recently, too. And I know he also worked with Alice on this album, Detroit uh, Stories, and, you know, along with original uh people from the Alice Cooper band. So yeah, Detroit seems to be where it's at. Is yeah. is there like, um, I know you mentioned M NC5, um, but is there like a first band that does come to mind when you're like, that's quintessential Detroit music? Uh, I, I always look back at um, Iggy and the Stooges. And for some reason, that is just my immediate um, go-to. That is, it's a thrill. Um, that kind of volume, that kind of energy. And um, that's, to me, yeah, that's like the go-to. I mean, we could talk about Bob Seger. Certainly, we brought up Ted Nugent. But I, I just sit and go, and not, of course, the Rockets, even the Romantics. You know, I just go, ah, here's more guitar. You know, Kenny McCarty, the guitar player from the, uh, the Rockets, just phenomenal. So it just goes on and on and on. But, yeah, I guess when I go all the way back to some rootsy thing, some primal thing, that would be, you know, Iggy and the Stooges. Fair. Good answer. I like it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. So next question, I think a lot of people want to know the origin of the name Sponge. Were there other names considered and where, where did you guys land on that? Yep. Yeah. There was one name. This is a true story. Um, we were, we did it down to two names, which was Sponge or something called the electric cattle gods. And um, we were, setting up to play a show at the Ritz just outside of Detroit. And uh, they wanted to know what to put on the marquee for the band's name that night. And uh, we wanted the electric cattle guys, but the club owner came up to me. He goes, Vin, I don't have enough damn letters for the electric <laughs> cattle guys. It's got to be sponge. So we're like, okay, put sponge up there. And that's how it rolled out. And it was sponge ever since. I love that so much. Oh. <laughs> We need a more compact name. Okay. So did, did you ever get to use the other name for another project or are you still leaving that one in the past? Electric Cattle It's so well, good. I, mean, I think that's, if somebody wants to use that, certainly credit me somewhere, but not necessarily financially, but I haven't seen an Electric Cattle Gods uh, <laughs> since. So I think that, that name is open for use. All right. The night is young. We might have to form a band later, Danica. <laughs> and I'm down. <laughs> so I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could it? Another thing that like Danica and I wanted to mention was like your music, what I, I felt like really painted, I'm trying to think of a way to, to word this other than your music was featured on so many soundtracks that really was a picture of our life, such as Empire Records. I mean, Danica and I have watched that movie more times than we could ever count. But um, <laughs> what is one of your favorite soundtracks of all time? that uh, doesn't necessarily have um, the this, this sponge music in it. Because yes. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that Empire Records was so well done. You know, it, it, yeah. it seemed to blend music, the story, the uh, actors and actresses. Uh, it was just really good. So I, I, I certainly appreciate that. <laughs> that movie a lot not to just kind of agree with you but i just go you're allowed <laughs> yeah we know we're right it's fine yeah. <laughs> right and we did just celebrate rex fanning day again so yes of course <laughs> but uh we're huge nerds and we understand that it's fine no but i mean like what what kind of movies do you get to watch where you're like i want to work in a record store you know like you don't get so many movies where you're like that's my new profession and unfortunately <laughs> stuff like that doesn't exist anymore so my fantasy of working in a record store will never happen but at least the movie there's was one fun. down the street from us oh really mm -hmm. here in houston there is a record store down the street and it is legit well the vinyl <laughs> thing the vinyl thing is just like you know exploded and maintained for so long mm -hmm. now if you go to a record store you're like literally looking at records and for my money you know it's like any new sponge record we're talking about a new sponge record you know we put out um a record of demos uh in the last couple of years and even that came out on vinyl and i had no idea they were going to release it on vinyl but i just think it's such an important uh, medium to release music on anymore like who even has a cd player you know what i mean you get a file you download it but vinyl people actually have record players so i go i'm encouraged by that yeah, definitely. And, and they're also collector's items, too. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Plus you know, sign it and the I, I love um some of the newer vinyl that's coming out. You know, it, it's it's just like anything goes as far as colors and different weighted vinyl. Very, very cool. So yeah, Sponge has done a ton like uh, of re-releases. Uh, our first album, uh, Roddy Pinata, came out on vinyl, and uh, we're just ready to do our second record, which is the 25th anniversary of Wax Ecstatic, on vinyl. Uh, a company called War God is going to release that as well. So, I mean, cool splatter type vinyl, and uh, you know, the band always gets behind those releases a thousand percent. That's wonderful, and nothing sounds as good as a record playing on a record player. I mean, yeah. it's just, uh, oh, you just feel it more. But that's awesome, very cool. Yeah. So kind of in the same vein, but going kind of the opposite direction, um, do you have a film that your music has been featured in that is your favorite movie? Wow. Um, the, you know, between Sponge, I have this other band, Crud. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, that music has been in so many TV shows, movies, and whatnot it, it, it's kind of mind-boggling you know like we do have one song uh called all this and nothing more i think it's called if i remember correctly and it's <laughs> moving the craft and i thought the craft was <laughs> also one of our favorites <laughs> yeah. and i i thought the, how the song was used was dynamite i really appreciated the fact that there were a lot of you know it's just i may be a sucker obviously for the 90s music and I kind of rediscovered 90s music about two years ago. And I just, oh my God, there's, there was so much great, great, great music that came out of the 90s. And to have a bunch of bands filling up a soundtrack, you know, from that era is really cool. I Couldn't feel like more. Yeah. I feel like that's all I listen to is music from the 90s. It just it makes me feel good. I mean, like, I, I, I do, I, I appreciate the music that's coming out today, but it's just, it's not the same. It's just, it, it, think things are changing. But speaking of music, coming out soon. I know we wanted to ask you about a new record that's coming out on, is it the Cleopatra label? Yeah, that's correct. Cleopatra's got our new record and we're looking at a late June, early July release. The record's called Lavatorium and um, it's uh, <laughs> 10 brand new sponge songs. Um, well, actually nine. They asked us to do a cover. Um, so we did a Bauhaus cover, which I, oh. I, I really, you know, I, I was like, they, they didn't tell me exactly what cover they wanted. You know, they could have told me, you know, do a Kiss song or Alice Cooper or something like that. But they left it up and um, we picked a Bauhaus song. So was this an album that you guys have been working on, like during this craziness of the world during the pandemic? Or has this been something that was in production before the pandemic yeah, started? Yeah, it started before. Like we had plans to make the record prior to the pandemic. It just ended up being that we had a little extra time to focus on the record because of the pandemic, because of all the gigs last year either getting canceled or moved around. So, yeah, it was like, well, we got plenty of time to make a record. So let's let's finish it up. That's awesome. I definitely look forward to hearing that. That that sounds really cool. And I love the name. And that's fun. OK, OK. Yeah, so, Sorium. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> so. Okay, side question, since you mentioned Kiss and Alice again, if you were to do a cover of a Kiss song, mm. is there a Kiss song that jumps out to you that you would like to cover? Like a who song? A Kiss song? Oh, Kiss. <laughs> um, yeah, I would do a cover of Beth, but I, I heard a clever cover of Beth years ago, but they just changed Beth to death. So it was like, <laughs> you know, Beth, I hear you calling, but I can't come home right now. Me and the boys be playing. I just can't find the time. Just a few more hours of death. What can I do? I go, man, that's pretty clever. It is clever. I like that. I have not heard that. That's hysterical. <laughs> man, I'm thinking I, I would like to cover Cold Gin is a good one. Or Strutter. Oh, man. I don't know. I'd have yeah. to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Those are solid go to sure. <laughs> Lots of good music. But um, is there a, a genre of music that you haven't really delved into that you would like to? Because I know, you know, you all of your bands have a different sound. So is there a, a type of music that you haven't yet experimented with? Um, you know, everything is pretty much a labor of, of love, you know, to sit and go, God, 
I'd love to spend more time focusing on something, yet something else. I go, I'm not too sure, you know, because it's like, yeah, the crud thing is kind of an industrial thing. And um, I've had this band called the Orbitsons for about 20 years. And uh, that's kind of this outlaw country thing, which is all done for fun. And, and, and certainly we've made money doing it, but it's a labor of love. So to go, you know, where else could I kind of, you know, what else could I screw up? You know what I mean? Because I do it all my way. But, you know, maybe like, you know, some Frank Sinatra music. That would be a lot of fun, I think. Frank Sinatra and or Dean Martin music, you know, dress up in the suits, really nice, sharp suits, and go sing that kind of shit for a minute would be fun. Say no more. The Rat Pack. I'll be there. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that sounds fun. And I haven't really thought about it until right now. So if I end up doing it, I can thank both of you for that. And we'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of switching gears a little bit here. Um, so you recently had a live stream from Vegas. Um, what was the reaction from the fans? And are you planning any more live stream events we can look forward to? Well, that one was very well put together, very well publicized. And um, I'd love to do another live stream. I think I'd like to do something that has to do with the release of the Wax Ecstatic 25th anniversary vinyl. Yeah. That would make a lot of sense to go and just play the whole Wax Ecstatic record in a studio environment. That would be a lot of fun. Yes, please. Have, have, you, <laughs> have you had a moment, because I'm having a moment right now, where you're like 25 years since Wax Ecstatic, and it still holds up. Like, that album is so great. Like, has it hit you that it's been 25 years? No, 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 no. I mean, it's just gone by the blink of an eye, and it's, it's not even our first record. You know, when I think about when Sponge first got together, which was probably... 1991 or 92 uh you know it that's a long time you know i just go my god when you think about elvis if elvis came out in what 1953 by the time his comeback happened in 68 what was that 15 years that was nothing it was a blink of an eye right right yeah, time flies, right? Uh, okay, so kind of to follow up with the, the live stream, obviously the world got put on pause with everything going on. Uh, and I believe I saw that you do have some upcoming events, but do you plan to tour or what is, um, what, what's it looking like? Yeah, we definitely have dates booked. A lot of dates we had booked ended up getting pushed further and further back into the year. So we got a pretty solid June coming up and then you know, things get kind of sketchy, but we're optimistic. I think a lot of bands that are willing to get into the van that can tour economically have a chance at, you know, going out and doing gigs. So, yeah, June is looking good. But until then, it's just kind of like bare bones. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that seems to be kind of common, but I, I feel like towards the end of the year and next year especially is going to be like huge for music fans. I feel like there's going to be so many incredible tours happening and, you know, I'm I'm so ready to just like be there. Like normally, I don't want to be sweat on by the guy next to me, but I feel like you know the pandemic happened. Now I'm like, cool. I want to like live in these moments. But <laughs> it, is there? Um, I know that this is a, a tough question to ask, but it, is there like a city um, or even a state that you're most looking forward to going back to? Maybe because of like roadside attractions or restaurants. Anywhere you're looking forward to in particular? <laughs> I. I just love to get, go, go anywhere anymore. I mean, I always love touring in Texas, man, because, like, we've always done really good in Texas. And, we, man, it's just so many great cities and great folks. And uh, are you folks out of Houston? I'm in Houston. Annika is. I'm in Miami. <laughs> I love Miami. But, oh, good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly Texas has always been a great place for us. And playing um, – before the pandemic started, we literally got done with a tour – Oh, the West Coast, and uh, we miss those rooms. We miss those people, you know. But it's weird when you talk about a pandemic, and I, I, I look at it like when we can go do this again, I feel like it's weird because I'm going, I got to have all my shots, what I, whatever shots I got to have. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, when we toured as a rock band years ago, it was kind of cool to be a dangerous rock person and – you hoped everybody had their tetanus shot when they come to shake your hand. You know what I mean? It's just, yes. And to think about having all my shots now, 
it makes me sound like a legitimately safe individual. So it kind of goes against the grain of what I would consider fun rock and roll. Fair enough. Do I have them? Do I not have them? <laughs> Come I want to go out there. I mean, I want to, you know, I want to shake people's hands. I want to, I, yes, I want to feel the sweat, you know, pouring off people's body in the front row and, and having that whole, a complete experience and to remove that to me is just like I go how is it even possible to do what we do the way we used to do I think it'll happen I mean I, I really truly do I think the world is going in, an, in a positive direction hopefully and we'll just have to hope for the best because there's I mean, nothing like there's nothing like hogging some big sweaty dude after the <laughs> dig outside a cornfield and you're covered in beer and you're covered in just like sweat and you're hogging, man. That's that's fun. Heck yeah, for sure. Well, okay, since, since you are mentioning beer, um, I guess one of the things we wanted to ask is about the beer sessions. Was there a, a beer that um, didn't have the time to shine during the series that uh, you wish you could have featured? Well, I tried to get to every damn beer I possibly can. Um, there was a company i think it was was it called the austin brothers beer but that might not be out of austin texas but we have so many fantastic breweries right here in michigan you know just dynamite and i wished for example right brain uh brewery out of traverse city i wished i could have given them more love i just couldn't get the product uh in time and a fresh product none, nonetheless so yeah mm -hmm. right brain out of traverse city would have been a lot of fun how, how much like fun though was it actually filming the beer sessions? Cause that had to be a good time. You mean in the studio? Well, um, I mean, cause uh, we were watching the different episodes. So first we saw in the studio and then we saw you, you know, actually out there, you know, with the people talking about the beer. So well, I guess the, the whole process in general. I mean, it's nothing but a stinking riot. That's exactly what you want to have when you're recording a record. Certainly we couldn't record all our records like that, but to be able to go, and go old school sponge, which was like, you know, you're driving to the studio, you're writing lyrics to a tune, you get to the studio in the morning, you cut the bed tracks, which is the drums, the bass and the guitar, and then take a break to have some beer and talk to brewers. <laughs> and after we've had a couple beers and some dinner, we go cut the final vocals and the guitar solos and boom, one song a day, you know, and it was a lot of fun that way. Amazing, yeah, ah, what a cool life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then we had you know we had some of our friends come in on uh the uh the pole fit girls which is fitness on um uh stripper poles and yeah and that was added fun those girls are strong like that it's, is a yeah skill. no joke <laughs> be an olympic sport i heard they're going to add that so what you know they have horizontal poles what's wrong with a vertical pole mm -hmm. yeah it's that kind of <laughs> that kind of sports ability is that is just no joke. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I can't do it. <laughs> no. yeah. I, I help out those gals and any every time I can. Awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Um I have kind of a weird question. Um I was digging because I was so curious about this, but I can't find an answer. So I had to ask you, what's with the candy corn? Oh, what's with the candy corn? <laughs> so with Rotting Pinata cover, you know, the album, and then you've got some on the, the hits cover, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah. that it's like sprinkled on there. What what's going on with this? Tell me about this. <laughs> I, I I think the origin of the candy corn has to do with when we finished up our first album, which may have been like in October of ninety-three or something like that. And and uh fall was happening and somebody brought candy corn into the studio and it's just something like I typically don't eat candy corn, man. I don't. I don't like candy corn. It's just weird. It's not even candy to me. It's just something <laughs> weird that like old people give you. But it's like, um, um, I I think it was in the studio, and it just somehow kind of seemed important to somebody to include on our record. And we have a song called uh, Candy. Yeah, yeah, the hidden track, of course. Yeah, the hidden. Which track. which I'm kind of bummed that like you can't hide tracks anymore. Yeah, this is true. I, I mean, like a file, you probably can, you know, but it's not as cool. Like yeah. on a piece of vinyl, you see the, you know, you see where the vinyl's cut, but you don't see a title. 
and you're very excited for a minute, you know, and then you're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I think the big question was if you are a candy corn guy and I think we got the answer. Think, yeah, Is it negative? No. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah, I'm not a candy corn guy. I just can't do it, man. Fair enough. Yeah. Back I'm during working. Halloween, we were asking a lot of our guests about it. I've never seen people more divided in my life over <laughs> like team candy corn or anti. I mean, I don't know. It's not I'm for me. I'm hardcore against. All I mean, right. I had a gold tooth once and I go, if I could yeah. have candy corn colored tooth, that would have been, that been gold. <laughs> right up front. You know, like I remember uh, the gold tooth. That was that was epic. <laughs> I remember, man, Gary Oldman when he played that pimp. I love Gary oh, Oldman. Yeah. Of course. He had that. I think he had a gold tooth, man, but I can't remember if it was right up front. You know, mm-hmm. I got to research that movie. Yeah, I've seen people with candy corn teeth and bad. Oh God. Okay, sorry. Reading the comments. Okay, so uh, we before we get to our game because we have a game that we're going to play. Um, aside from you know your normal equipment, uh, what is one thing that you always like to bring with you on the road? Very simple. You can ask anybody. I got a pair of gorilla hands. Uh, oh, uh? There's got to be a story there. Rob. Kind of, yeah, rubber gorilla hands. And uh, um, the gorilla suit was used in a photo shoot with my band Crud for our second record. And uh, uh, the the rubber glove just got left in my bag. And I always thought it was funny when I get checked at the airport and I go into my bag and they find my rubber gorilla hands. You know, hmm. once in a while I use them up for gigs, you know what I mean? It's just weird. I love that. That's great. I wonder what kind of stares the TSA gives you. They're like, do we stop him for this? Is this, is this allowed? Like, okay. Just, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's just, yes, yeah. True, I love weird. Weird is great. We're all about weird here. All right, so, Vin, we have a game Speaking we're gonna play. Um, this is a game of would you rather. There is no wrong answers. We're gonna give you two choices, and all you have to do is pick between the two. And we have a graphic we're gonna bring up. And Danica, do you want to read the first one? Let's do it. All right. Would you rather incorporate a set of bagpipes into a band or incorporate a xylophone into a band? Bagpipes. Ooh, okay. Oh, I mean, that, that was a quick answer. Yeah. <laughs> Very ACDC, right? <laughs> the pipes, man, are, are, are multi-level rock. You know, there's just all kinds of rock and pipes. Have you ever tried to play the bagpipes? Yes. Yeah, oh. my... Uh, my uh, father-in-law, God rest his soul, he felt I needed to get, have bagpipes, so he got me my own bagpipes. So I have bagpipes here at the house. What? That's cool. Bagpipes? Okay. <laughs> Living for this. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather listen to Till I Hear It From You on repeat for 24 hours or listen to Free by the Martinis on repeat? So listen to free by the martinis on repeat yeah you know, yeah i i'm i'm like listen to free by the martinis on repeat that's the choice okay yeah once again both from the best soundtrack at pirate records obviously all right <laughs> next one all right would you rather travel only by train or travel only by boat train 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 <laughs> Gosh, I can't even think of the last time I've ever been on a train, but I guess it's a good way to travel. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah train, man. Okay. Am I going to be like psychologically evaluated after this? <laughs> yes, we will have we'll your talk results. talk to you about it later. Yes, after. Well, um, ha- how are you with cruise ships? Are we for or against? I mean, you know what? It, yeah, I, I've done these like rock cruises and they're kind of fun, but I feel kind of confined you know mm-hmm. like I, I, after a while there's only so much beer so much liquor you can drink at the various bars and eventually i just got to get off the boat fair but you were like i'm in the middle of the ocean okay yeah that's a whole other thing <laughs> with these yeah. with these gorilla hands what do i do <laughs> all right uh here's the next one would you rather have a writing session with roy orbison or a writing session with john cash oh uh, roy yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess that makes sense with your band yeah. and all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, for, you know, I, Roy was uh, 
Roy wrote little symphonies, you know what I mean? And I, I, I know it sounds kind of boring. What do you do on the road sometimes? I, I would study Roy, you know. I, I think that Roy was a, and don't get me wrong, Cash is a genius in his own right, but Roy was like the master of little symphonies. And I, you know, hats off to Roy. Is, is there a song that when you listen to it just can completely change your mood? Oh, by Roy? Mm-hmm. Ryan. <sighs> Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's so good yeah yeah uh, yes that, and that's a perfect example of his his writing genius mm -hmm. certainly all right next one Ooh, next one all right would you rather have a room decorated only like floor to ceiling in cream magazine decor or have a room entirely decorated floor to ceiling in motown decor uh uh, that's a real tough one, man. But, you know, it's like the Cream Magazine. I was one of those people that would read Cream Magazine. You know, love rock and roll. But um, I, I think I'm going to have to give it to the Motown, man, because, uh, yeah, there's just so much incredibly great, inspiring music that uh, certainly inspired a lot of rockers. So, yeah, Motown. Hell, yeah. yeah. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather... Ooh, see a Lou Reed biopic made or see an Alice Cooper biopic made? Oh, man. You know what? I know so much about Cooper. I, I don't know a shit ton about Lou Reed. Like, you know, like Lou would say shit like, if you were a Lou Reed fan, you must not care about your career too much. And, <laughs> and I dig, I dig pro, yeah, Lou, because I'd like to know a little bit more about Lou Reed. I like, I like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. All right. Next one. All right. Would you rather replace all the corn you eat with candy corn or replace all the peanuts you eat with circus peanuts? <laughs> That's a sh rotten question. Both <laughs> terrible questions. Yes. They're both terrible gross. questions. Like when's the last time you actually had a circus peanut? I Never. don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> they burn. Like, I mean, like you like them. But burn. So, they burn. I mean. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to go with circus peanuts, man. Mm. Just... Aesthetically, I don't know if I could do it. Uh, I just, I'm offended, like, by the way that it looks. You know what? Like... I eat more corn than I do peanuts. So I go, I would eat less circus mm. peanuts, you know? Oh, once again, yeah. clever. I like the thought process here. Yeah. <laughs> Really right. thinking through it all. Yeah. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather? Okay. This is our final one. Jam with the first band that you ever saw live, or jam with the first band's album you bought. Oh, jam with the first band's album that I bought. Yeah. Which was what? Uh, probably the first one I purchased was uh, Diamond Dogs, David Bowie, and of course we all know that that would certainly be. Impossible, but in in a, in a realm of what if I could, that's what I would do. Yeah, oh, this yeah. is yes, and that's exactly what this is—the realm of what if. But um, do you remember the first band you ever saw live? Uh, yeah, it was probably the uh, the Count Basie Orchestra, um, at a mall just outside Detroit. So you know, Count Basie is very cool. I think my dad, my dad was a big fan, so he took us over there. And it was very loud and very fun, but it wasn't quite my thing. Fair yeah. enough. Say no more. Well, <laughs> we reached the end of the game. We'll have your results to you in about 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> uh, so before, oh, okay. Uh, Jude wants to know, do you have a guilty pleasure album in your collection? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm a country music fan and uh, the most recent, uh, Tanya Tucker record, I really dig. Mm. Um, Billy Don Burns, who worked with Shooter Jennings. Shooter Jennings is Waylon's uh, son, and Shooter's oh. got a band. And Shooter worked with Brandy Carlisle and uh, Tanya oh, Tucker nice. on the new record. But you know, he works with people like Billy Don Burns, and uh, they got together and did a record in uh, the room that uh, Graham Parsons supposedly died in. And uh, that's probably oh, wow. one of my favorite records. It's really Don Burns just playing acoustic and singing in that room. And that's the kind of shit, you know, like a, or a Chris Christopherson record that I just put on when I'm working. And, and um, you know, that's that's not 
a, a rock record for sure. Chris Christopherson has a son um, that is a wrestler that goes by the name War Pig. And so that's been so cool to see War Pig around the, the, I guess, yeah, mostly in Florida, but I think maybe now in Hawaii, I don't know where he is. But when I found out that's who Sonny was, I was like, oh, that's even cooler. Like, right. that is so cool. Like, uh, Have you had him on the show? Have you had no, him on the show? we've not yet. No. no. Oh man, that, that must, that's gotta be a must, I suppose. I wonder if that particular son is the son nobody talks about. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know that he had a son that's a wrestler. And I think, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan and I think the wrestling thing is just a riot, you know, but I didn't know that Christopherson had a son that wrestled. Yeah, and he's good and it's a cool gimmick too. Real quick though, you mentioned you're a wrestling fan. Oh, Jody Christopherson. Yeah, that's his name. Uh, so do you have a, a, a wrestler that's your favorite or a favorite era of wrestling? Yeah, yeah, the ECW era when uh, Sabu wrestled in ECW along with like Tajiri, Super Crazy, uh, Balls Mahoney, and like Roadkill. I used to go to all those matches, my uh, nephew and myself. We would travel to Cleveland, Ohio, um, the Agora. We would travel to Toledo. And uh, we travel all over the place to watch ECW, which was to me the best wrestling on earth. It was the punk rock of wrestling. EC Dub, EC Dub. And we just had uh, RVD just got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Of yeah, course, he's yeah. one of the best of, of that time. And um, oh my God, yeah, the talent is insane, like truly insane, you know? And that's, I just based my enthusiasm based on their talent. And, you know, people sit there and go, you know, that's ah, not real. I go, Oh shit, man! This stuff, this is like high art to me. So yeah. So my husband and I also, uh, we actually got married by Mick Foley. We are <laughs> very big wrestling fans. I mean, our life, we eat, sleep, breathe wrestling. They're actually yeah. doing the, um, uh, I think it's, I want to say eight part documentary right now on A and E about different wrestlers throughout that era. And of course, ECW is a huge part of it. They just did one on Stone Cold. No, well, I guess you know, dabbled in ECW, but I, you know. Where you mentioned wrestling, and I'm like, hmm? like yeah. what? Well, um, uh, John wants to know what inspired you to write Radio Prayer Line. It's help, you know. It's one of those things to where Radio Prayer Line is a song about somebody desperate, look, desperately looking for help and good advice, as well. You know, I think a lot of people are uh, back then and today. So to have a song like Radio Prayer Line putting out some situation where it um, helps the character in the song and it could help somebody in real life too, you know? Yes, of course. Whew. And now my, my Vincent said, Roy Orbison's crying and wrestling fan. You might be my father. Okay. Well, hi, that, that, that's a whole nother stream. But uh, before we do wrap this up, is there any thoughts that you want to leave us with here? You know, I really enjoyed talking to both of you. This is, it was cool how it came together. I think you do a fantastic job. I didn't know what to expect, you know. Oh, but thank, thank you. you. No one ever does. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> everyone's like, would you rather? What the hell is this? And we're like, just you wait. Just you wait. Um, but before you wrap this up, we want to go over our upcoming guests. So uh, on Thursday, we have Edward Furlong from Terminator 2 and American History X. Next week, we're welcoming back Casey Jost from Practical Jokers Insider. Uh, at the end of the month, we have Amy Yazbek from Robin Hood Men in Tights. On Tuesday, maybe you know this guy, Vin, we have the godfather also, <laughs> Papa Shango from the WWF. And then the Tuesday after, we have Steve Gonzalez, and we have a special announcement. I, this is so corny, and please don't hate us because it's 420. We, we had to announce it today. We, we had, had to, to announce it today. So uh, coming up next month on May 13th, we're so excited. We have Tommy Chong showing. Oh. <laughs> We're so stoked. <laughs> That'll be fun. So we have a really cool lineup. And Vin, thank you so much. This has been such an honor. I hope that you um, know how much your music means to me and Danica and everybody watching. I mean, I'm going to go listen right after this. Probably to the Empire Records. Empire Records. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Darn, but, uh, I'll have to see it for a fourth time this year. But I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you so much again. We we really truly appreciate it. Well, thank you, kid. Thank you, Danica. <laughs> thank well, you. Awesome. And hopefully we'll see you and your gorilla hands on the road later this year. <laughs> <laughs> and, we'll, <laughs> and we'll see everybody else on Thursday. Have a wonderful night, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.